As we've seen so far, the type of controller we use affects the performance of the system in terms of the time domain parameters we define, such as max overshoot, rise time, settling time. But it also affects the steady state error, which we saw when we looked at the tracking and regulation problems. And obviously, there are many methods that have been developed over the years, considering these uh, frequency domain methods have been around 50, 60 years. There have been many methods developed to tune or to pick the gains in the control law, KP, KI, and KD, if we're using a PID controller. Furthermore, the stability of these systems is easily analyzed looking at the routh hurwitz or what we're going to see next week as the, the root locus methods. But of course, there are many numerical techniques that have been developed throughout the years, and MATLAB is an incarnation of many of these methods. If we go ahead and define a uh, plant transfer function, and we're going to go ahead and use the same example we used before where we have a spacecraft, so it's a 1 over s squared transfer function. And I could throw a j in there, uh, which would be the inertia, but we'll just leave things to unity. It's all going to scale. And we use what we call SISO tool. Now, SISO tool stands for single input, single output tool. And we can pass as a function uh, the, the plant that we want to work with as g. We go ahead and now I will think about it. And it opens up a GUI and a couple of plots that we're going to take a look at and learn how to use uh, in a fairly rudimentary sort of way. So it will go ahead and move these around a little bit, just to organize. Notice the first thing we see over here in the GUI is the current architecture that we, we're using. G here is our plant, C is the compensator that we're going to design, H would be a feedback filter, and F it would be a feed forward filter. You notice we can change the architecture, just like we saw in the uh, video on, on different kinds of architecture, we can go ahead and select different kinds of architecture. This is essentially a feed forward kind of architecture, and there's a variety of architectures defined. For, our archite for the architecture we're using, we can go ahead and define the, the sign of this, feed, this sum junction. So we've got a negative feedback that we're assuming instead of positive feedback. And also under blocks and signals, we can change the identifiers and the names of all the different uh, blocks that we're using in here. And there's a, a number of them. We're going to go ahead and leave that as it is. Um, we can also then look at the system data. And this tells us for each G, H, C, and F, what value are you, we using? G is coming from the, uh, the workspace, so it's the 1 over S squared. And then H, C, and F are all 1 right now. H and F we want to leave as 1, but we want to modify C and see what happens. We can go over here into the Compensator Editor tab, and notice it says the compensator is C, so that's the one we're working on, and it's just 1, and that corresponds to what we saw over here. If we go ahead and change this, now we will start to see changes over here. Um, we haven't yet looked at the root locus or the Bode plot, um, but we would see that these do, in fact, change if we go ahead and change the... Uh, gain here on the compensator C, and notice it didn't change form, just in magnitude. A more useful way of looking at this whole system is to look at the step response of the system. So we're going to look at the step response of the closed loop system from the reference input to the output Y. And again, this goes back to the architecture of there's reference input output Y. And it's pretty clear that in this closed loop system, with just a proportional gain, we have a marginally stable system. And we see that's indeed what we have. So what if I wanted to add a different type of controller? I wanted to add a derivative term, or I wanted to add a integral term. Well, if I right click in this box over here, I can add, I can add poles, uh, real poles, complex poles, integrators, or real zeros, complex zeros, integrator, differentiators and what we call lead lag or notch filters. Let's say I had a, go ahead and add a real pole, uh, or let's actually go with a, a real zero. Now what this does is it adds a zero to the compensator, and this is essentially now a PD controller, because the compensator has a, a proportional term and a derivative term. And notice what happened over here in our time response. The system goes to 1, which is our commanded value after some 
finite amount of time. And notice over here, all these plots changed. Okay, so that's uh, something we're going to have to look at. If I want to add a uh, integral integral term, I could add a um, a real pole. And if I put them at the same location, they're obviously just going to cancel each other out. So I'll go ahead and move the um, move the pole out further. And notice, you know, it's not maybe not as good as the other system, but we're just picking numbers here at this point, so we don't really have a good indication of of uh, why this is is working. And so let's go ahead and remove these. And we're really just guessing and checking at this point. So we'll go ahead and remove these. So after we've removed all of these poles and zeros we added, we're going to go to the automated tuning tab. And in the automated tuning tab, there are several options. We'll go with just regular old PID tuning. We're going to use, instead of robust time response, we could use that. We're going to use instead the classical design formulas. And we're going to use the Zeigler-Nichols frequency response tuning rule. And then we're going to select a PID controller design, and we're going to click the Update Compensator button. And it throws out this particular uh, compensator, which if you look at it is a PID control law and it with some gains and then here's our frequency response or our step response and again these these plots over here have changed as well. Uh, if we didn't like that we could uh, use a PI controller update compensator. Oh it doesn't work. Alright because I need that derivative term. Uh, we could certainly go with one of the other uh, suggested methods and see, no, that's not going to work. So even though these are automated, they're still somewhat uh, guess and check. Here's another method which gave us essentially a PID uh, response um, using the approximate MIGO step response. There are other, other things that we can do here. If we go ahead and um, click instead of PID tuning, we use the optimization based tuning, we can go ahead and optimize. And the first thing that we have to do is, here's our compensator. We're going to adjust the C compensator. And we're going to add design requirements. And we can go in here and we can set these bounds. We're going to assume we want a 5% rise time, 10% settling time. I'm going to just use all the defaults. Click OK. And notice what it does is it puts these yellow boxes around. And so what it's going to try and do is come up with a step response that fits inside what's uh, white there. That's the feasible region, feasible region given our, our constraints. So now I'm going to go ahead to the optimization. And I'm going to go ahead and click Start Optimization. And it's going to go ahead and try several methods to develop a control law which will fit into our um, design requirements, and lo and behold, it did, and we're done. So literally, there is an easy button for PID control design. Now, we don't know much about the ins and outs of this. We don't know, uh, so it's, it's a very big tool that we don't quite understand. But our goal now is to try to understand a little bit about how these plots over here help us do analysis for this uh, PID controller. Because if we had a more complicated system, instead of just 1 over s squared, then we might not be able to find uh, satisfy our requirements using just PID control or just using these optimizations. We'd actually need to know a little bit about what's going on. But it's useful to get comfortable with using SISO tool and Simulink to do analysis of controller design and performance analysis.